Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I want to share a tutorial for the Doodlebug 6x6 Winter Wonderland paper pad. I'm going to be using the paper pad as well as a set of stickers that coordinate. They are a glitter sticker and then I pulled some things from my stash. One of the reasons that I chose to do that was because I want to mix it up. Sometimes I like to use just the paper pad and show you really, really minimal supplies. And I also other times like to show how you might be able to use up some stuff you have. So I had this blue and pink twine that really coordinated well. I had some purple cardstock that I wanted to use up. And I had these enamel stickers that were in very similar colors to the colors of the paper pad. So I encourage you, if this is something you're interested in, like take a look around your craft room. What is something that is coordinating with the paper pad you want to use? And you would like, to, you know, if you have a bunch of ribbon, well, can you pull out a purple ribbon and make a point to use it as often as possible? I cut up some of the purple cardstock that I wanted to use up. It was actually like a thinner cardstock, not as high quality and some blue cardstock that I thought would help give these little cut apart images a little bit more weight. And this time I am going to be following sketches a lot more than I typically would. Um, the cut aparts, I believe they come to two and two by two and a half once I put the background on them, but all of the measurements for everything are over on my blog. You don't have to worry about writing anything down or what it is, etc. Like you just go over to the blog and you'll see every card. I'll tell you how many I made and the exact measurements of almost every element on each card. So hopefully that's helpful to you. And if I did use a sketch for a particular card, the sketch, like where to find the sketch and the sketch number, etc., are also all right there under the picture of the card. Um, so, you know, in some ways it's like, hmm, well, what's the point of the video? It's mostly just if you like to watch someone craft or like to have someone talking with you while you're crafting about crafting things, I guess. Um, I like to do that. I like to craft a video. So that's why I add in the voiceover. So in order to get a lot of cards, I'm making 34 cards with the paper pad and there are 24 sheets of paper. I've mentioned this before, but I always try to challenge myself to make at least the number of cards as there are sheets of paper. So like if there's 24 sheets of paper, I would make at least 24 cards. But this time um, I was able to get more and partly because I'm leaving a lot of white space on the cards. The, I'll hopefully share this tip um, I'll remember to share these, you know, little tips that I have about using things up, but the twine here, I'm not concerned about making sure that every, like I'm using twine the most economically as I can. I'm not afraid to use a lot of it. So here where I don't want to show the bow or anything like that, I'm oh, sorry. In this instance, actually I am going to show the bow. Um, I'm wrapping it right around the card. And the thought process there is that is a lot faster and easier than trying to like hide it behind the panel or trim everything up. And so it saves me a lot of time, but maybe it's not the most economical use of the resources. But to me, you know, if I look around my craft room, I go, oh, I have a lot of ribbon and or a lot of twine. And I, sometimes I wind up donating things because like when I bought the package there was just too much of it um, so after I've used it a bit I'm doing that so I'm like well why am I gonna try to scrap and save and or scrimp and save every little piece of ribbon or whatever or maximize it so um, wrapping it right around the card is one way you can um, save a, a, a nice chunk of time I also was able to get a little bit more for my paper because instead of like usually you know I have an A2 size card and when I cut a background panel I tend to cut it to just a quarter inch smaller this time I actually left a lot more room on around the edges if you're going to be doing this style where you're actually um, leaving a lot of extra room and you're going to see a lot of your card base I think it's especially important to have a thicker higher quality card base now that doesn't mean it has to be super expensive like you don't have to get the nina or anything like that i actually and i'll link to this i use an amazon brand 
And I used to use Michael's because it, I could get to Michael's easily. That's just been a little bit more difficult lately, so I've switched over. And the Amazon one that I found, I can get, it's a little bit brighter of a white, so I like that. Also, to save even just a little bit more, I get the Amazon Warehouse one where they're used, which just means that the packaging was damaged. And I've ordered it twice, or actually I think three times, and while the packaging has always been damaged, it's almost never actually affected the cardstock. So it's certainly a gamble, but it might be a gamble worth taking. So here you might see that I cut two pieces of twine. It's because I'm making two of most of these cards. That's what I usually do because there are two of each of the pattern papers, two of each of the cut aparts. So um, to, to make sure that I'm using my time as efficiently as possible, I am going to you know try to trim up both pieces of paper and trim up both lengths of twine. There I'm just hiding the knot behind my cut apart here and I'm going to use something to pop it up. I will probably be using layered cardstock. If you watch my channel, I always mention that, that I like to um, just layer up my scraps of cardstock and use that as foam tape instead. Also, as I've been making these cards, I'm trying to use up some of the stickers right away, especially the small ones. I usually don't remember, or, yeah, I usually don't remember to use some of those, and then I kind of go back at the end and add them, which is totally fine. Um, that's a, a good strategy as well. But um, I was trying to kind of fully design each card this time. And I always think about how I want to use the big stickers because I want them to be like a really important part of the card, but then I sometimes forget that I also want to make sure that I don't have a bunch of tiny little stickers left. So that's my thought process. Now, I want to apologize because I thought you could see the top of the paper trimmer and it, that would help you to see some of the measurements, but you can't. So I'm sorry, but again, all the measurements are over on my blog. And so you, you, you can still get them. It's just, it, this, it didn't work out the way that I was hoping. I love that doodlebug papers are double-sided. I say that a lot in these videos, but that's why I do these videos often with doodlebug, but I have done them with a variety of, I've done them with paper pads from Michaels and My Mind's Eye and um, I don't remember some of the other companies right now, but the double-sided papers certainly do make it a bit easier. I wrote down some measurement help for me because the um, the sketches that I started with, I picked out a few that had rectangles or squares, like shapes that kind of reminded me of the cut apart. So I was like, okay, then I'll know I can use them a lot. And this was, um, I recorded this back in January of 2020. So I'm releasing this video quite a bit later, but I just wanted it to sort of match up with when you might be wanting to make holiday cards again. Um, I printed out a few sketches that I liked and I'd done that for years. And then I was like, why am I always like gathering and printing sketches each and every time that I go to make a card? Because that's, you know, it's much more time consuming. And I finally realized I should just try to gather a bunch of sketches, especially when I noticed that MFT has all of their past sketches for their sketch challenge as a PDF that you can download on their website. So when I realized that I was like, well, no brainer. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to print it out. And so then I ordered a binder and I actually ordered the um, uh, Amy Tan. She has a, a cute like a binder from Avery that is has a, a crafty saying on it. So I just picked like, a really adorable binder and I added all of my sketches in page protectors. Of course, page protectors make it a little bit more expensive and, you know, certainly could be considered wasteful, all that plastic. But I tend to, if, you know, like if I'm not going to use them for the sketches anymore, I'll find a new use for them. I won't be getting rid of them. And it saves me from having to reprint all of the sketches. This time, the using the sketches as opposed to um, kind of just like freehanding it did create maybe a bit more paper waste, but I'll show you, or if I, if it's not in the video, I'll, I'll kind of explain to you how I do it. I um, have a way of using up some of those, even those little tiny strips that I've been creating. I actually even use some die cuts this time, which is a little bit different for me. I usually never do that just because when you do that, it adds a lot of time to the process. 
And that's totally cool if like that's what you want to be doing and you're totally enjoying it. Um, but when I'm trying to make a bunch of cards for a video and trying to record it, I sometimes will choose some simpler methods. And when you die cut, it leaves more scraps, which again is totally fine. You don't have to use every inch of the paper. But sometimes when I'm making these, I am trying to focus a little bit more in on that idea of how you can have almost no waste at the end. So I thought about sometimes like would it be nice to switch them up because they're double sided? So like I could have the Yeti showing on this one and then pull in the um, Yeti uh, sticker or like in that one there the snowman so I could flip it over or I could use the simple pattern and I kind of like that. I also I there is a stamp set that coordinates and there are stickers. And I think that there's kind of an argument for either one. Uh, the last 6x6 paper pad tutorial I shared, I use it was a birthday pad. I used the stamps. And it was nice that you have that stamp set forever and always, especially if you like the images a lot. But it certainly takes up a lot more time. So there's the um, Amy Tan Avery binder that I ordered. And here are all the sketches inside. So I, I basically was like, you know, this is this is going to be the investment that's going to pay off in terms of making a lot of cards. So hopefully now you can see, uh, maybe I actually fixed it and you can see some of the measurements in the video. Um, but uh, with the stickers versus the stamps, coloring all those images certainly takes a lot more time. And here, when I was able to just like, I was like, oh, you know, I want a fox. I don't have to worry about what colors I chose to make it. I don't have to take, even if it's only five minutes to color the fox or three minutes to color the fox, that's a lot longer than just grabbing that sticker there. So um, this particular paper pad had a lot of really great uh, cut aparts. Like they had a lot of sayings that I thought either worked or they didn't have a saying at all, which I also really like. And if they don't have a saying, I encourage you to consider that you don't need a sentiment on the front of your card. I think we're kind of used to always adding a sentiment, but you're going to probably write something on the inside. So if you're also, you know, if you're going to write Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays on the inside anyway, it doesn't need to be in both places. So there I was adding some sticky notes for like sketches that I might use in the future because when I was going to my binder I did not want to like pick just one sketch, make a card, then go back and back and back and back. Um, again, trying to be a little bit more efficient. So I went through and I was like, okay, I'm going to look for sketches that maybe have something similar to this cut apart image, like that little, like something that has a small rectangle. And when I find that, I'll like bookmark a few or sometimes I write a few down so that I can go back and reference them quickly. This particular pattern paper that I'm working on now it had those little square cut aparts in the back and I have used those on the design of cards. I think there's a Halloween paper pad where I do it, but I will say that there's them being small and then them kind of being a little bit random about what's next to them um, makes them really difficult to use. So I am happy when I can just use the other side with Doodlebug. I used my corner chomper there and I think even if you were to take the approach of trying to not have a lot of scraps, so therefore you were using a lot of like simple shapes and rectangles, doing something like a quarter corner punch can really add some quick interest. Here, I wanted a piece of paper that stretched across my card, but my paper wasn't long enough. Since I knew that the cut apart would cover it, I just cut it in half and spread it, and so I left a gap, and it still looks like a... Um, a, like a big piece of paper across the center. So that's always a helpful tip if you feel like, oh, you know, this is just not quite the right size for what I need. I'm not afraid to use a smaller piece or in here, a longer piece. Like I kind of just eyeballed it and I, you know, maybe cut more twine than I needed and I wrapped it around again, etc. But I think it's important to just remember to not be too precious with anything in terms of like thinking like oh this is not perfect so I can't use it with like a piece that's maybe smaller or oh I, I wasted because I made my twine a little bit longer than it needs to be often it's just not that big a deal all right so as you can see um, I am trying to use scraps from one to the next so like this 
blue snowflake paper is that large paper that I just used on my last card. And as I go through the process, yes, I'm looking at sketches and thinking about that, but I'm also thinking, how can I use something immediately? Like how can I, this little um, scrap that I made, how can I use it up right away? without having to worry about at the end, now I have to find a sketch that includes all of these little scraps, or now I have to come up with an idea that uses all these little scraps. With the twine, in order to um, use it up quickly and efficiently, it can be really fun to just wrap it around things. And I've used just a little bit of scotch tape to keep things adhered. But when you do something like that, when you wrap the twine, it does layer the paper quite a bit and you're probably going to need to anything that you put over it like this um, cut apart element you're definitely going to want to pop it up i'm also as i go trying to use up these enamel stickers so um, as i finish a card i try to say okay is there any little space for them but i will also go back at the end and look at all the completed cards and go is there anywhere else i might be able to add something so there are the scraps of sorts that were created from the last card. So like since I used part of that flower paper on the last card, I'm like, okay, now I have these two pieces. Let me take my pieces of paper and go to my sketches and use that as a guide too. So it's kind of a, a twofold approach that I can sometimes have where I'm like, sometimes I'm motivated by um, the embellishment that I have. Sometimes I'm motivated by the pattern paper. I have like, what can I use um, to, or like I pick something to help kind of guide me. All right, so here I'm again going to take advantage of having a like odd piece of paper. This particular blue or flower piece, the strip, is not long enough to cover again, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be putting that cut apart at the end. Now, maybe that's not a look you like kind of how I like cut apart is hanging off of it, so you could do the tip that I shared earlier where you just cut it into two pieces, but just having it end early behind also worked pretty well. I did find that trying to add a diagonal bow at the same angle as the pattern paper was like super hard and fussy to do. Um, a piece of tape on the back can certainly help, but like I don't think I ever got it perfect, but it, like um, that's just one thing that can kind of hold it down. When you're doing it straight, it doesn't really matter. I don't usually add tape to the back or front, but here I found it pretty helpful to try to get the look that I was going for when I was trying to change it up a bit. So um, just another sort of simple card there. I also find with Doodlebug, if you're like, with the Doodlebug papers, they all coordinate, they all match. So pretty much any pattern paper that you use will work together, but the back and front of uh, the same piece almost always go really, really well together. As I'm placing enamel dots, I am thinking about a visual triangle very often. So here I'm creating like a triangle around the animal so that you, your eye goes from one star to the next star. And because I um, don't have an endless supply of stars of the same color, sometimes I would mix it up from one card to the next. Uh, you know, when I was making two of the same card, I would put two uh, I would put gems of one color on one card and one of, an of another color on the other card. Sorry, that was a really weird way of saying that. Um, but it helped make sure that I was using up the colors a little bit more evenly. And so here, this little blue pattern paper strip, I am actually was like using that to motivate the sketch I was picking because I was like, well, this is like the next biggest chunk I still have from the last couple cards I made. So um, it even is sometimes like a really small bit that's motivating me in terms of my choices because I know that if I don't use up that strip now, it's just going to be like a whole pile. You can kind of see off to the side there. There's like a whole pile of strips at the end. Now with this pattern paper, I kind of like had it hanging off the edge and it's going to create a lot of scraps, which is something that in the past I've tended to not do when I'm making these videos because I'm always trying to like use up every little scrap and show you that you don't even have to have any waste and um, it can really limit some of the designs that you do. 
so I think sometimes it is worth it to have maybe a little bit of waste uh, better than the paper like you know those little scraps that you put in the recycling at the end are way better than if that paper pad is just sitting in your collection forever so um, try not to or like you know keeping that those few more papers um, somewhere because I've had that where like I'll go through my six by six paper pad bucket and there's just like three sheets and like a bunch of little scraps left and I was like I I just need to use these up like what am I what am I doing I'm just you know using up a lot of room or I'm thinking oh you know I have that paper pad still and then I go to it and I'm like well these three pieces aren't like really all the patterns available so I don't really have that paper pad anymore because there's so few left I will say and one of the things that I um did use a lot more with this was solid cardstock and I think that's because there was like a lot of similar patterns that sometimes I felt like needed to be complemented or broken up by some more bold because there were so many like little snowflake patterns and other small like you know small dots but they're not that different than snowflakes so um I think some large areas of solid paper were really helpful with this particular paper pad and um something that I I don't mind adding in because it you know it's really when you're using smaller pieces like this and they're not on the card base itself I think that it's okay to use some of the like cheaper cardstock like I'm not going to be the one um getting some like MFT or Simon Says high quality you know 40 cents a sheet cards talk for this sort of thing so this time i mentioned i actually did use die cuts and so here are some it was cat scrappiness hearts a heart die cut i used before this time i'm using the banners but honestly if you want to keep it quick you can cut a banner um, the hearts may be a little bit harder but you could go with like a circle or something similar I do like that uh, with dies, like with these banner dies, I was able to just take out the physical die itself and place it in the design to see if I liked it. So if you've never considered doing that before, it's not anything, you know, revolutionary and genius, but um, just like with your clear stamps, you can place them on top of the design, like on top of your panel and think, oh, you know, is this going to look good here? You can actually do the same thing with most of your steel ruled dies. Like, oh, is this heart the right size? Just place it on there. So, um, This Adventure Awaits one, I was kind of like, mm, I don't know if that's really like makes sense as a sentiment. So I considered covering it and... Maybe I should have, but again, I think as long as on the inside you have your, your sentiment that it will, it'll make sense in the end. So here again, I wanted a banner that was a little bit longer, but the actual banners that I had, like the different die choices that I had, there wasn't one of the exact right length. So I'm going to cut it and cover it. And this is going to be an incredibly simple card. Like this is just like teeny tiny little bits of paper. But I think that that is totally fine when you're using that higher quality card stock in the background. Also, I think it actually part of the reason that it worked really well is because there is so much white in this collection. I have found in the past when I use like a really, even if I use like a really high quality colored cardstock if I leave that much white space I'm just not a big fan but I'm okay with it when it's white especially if I'm using a um a, a collection that coordinates well with white lengths and a, a lighter collection so that might just be a personal call but I just think that like this collection for whatever reason really lends itself to those bigger pieces or those bigger uh, borders. With some of the cards, even though I made two, if I used a sticker, it I might have used a different. Like if I if with that last card with the cabin, I chose a bunny sticker to like look like the bunny was in the foreground and the cabin was in the background. I used two different bunny stickers, but I'm not going to show both of those pictures on my blog just because it's so similar and. If you were using the stamp set, obviously you could stamp two of the exact same one and get a um, 
more exact look, but I think the stickers were worth it. Especially what I liked about these stickers is that little bit of glitter detail made them feel a little bit more special versus the like more a more solid or plain sticker. So I didn't, um, as somebody who stamps and die cuts a lot, I always feel like stickers are, or, well, I don't really feel so, but like, I think there, cause I know I, you know, part of me says, oh, it's cheating, but I'm like, no, it's not cheating. So I don't, I'm gonna say, that's what I mean by, I don't feel that way. I sometimes think, oh, I'm not showing as much love to this card because I'm not stamping it out, etc. I'm not coloring it. But then I remind myself, like, these stickers are, like, they're cute. They're, you know, I, I'm not choosing, like, the super cheap stickers or, I, I don't know, like, it's not cheating <laughs> is what I mean to say. Like, we kind of get ourselves hung up on things sometimes, or I don't know, I do. Maybe you guys are uh, don't share that sentiment, but... Um, as I was getting here towards the end after I made a lot of cards with those cut aparts, I was finding that I had a lot of stickers left. And on that note of like feeling like a sticker card was still special, I really tried to build up a scene with the sticker. So like there were these trees and there's the different animals and the snowflakes. And so I wasn't just sticking like one little sticker in the center of a big panel and calling it a day. I was really building up a scene like I might do with my stamps. And so here you see, I'm going to make the same card, but it's not, there's going to be a lot of differences, of course, because, you know, I don't have two of that exact same fox or the same deer, but um, using some similar ideas so that I'm not having to like um, reinvent the idea each time and that they'll be pretty similar for um, sharing on the blog and everything. Um, I was, I found it really easy to use the snowmen and the like little snowflakes, of course, and things like that. But then there were a few images that I really kind of struggled with, with the sticker sheet. And I definitely got to a point where I sort of gave myself permission to not necessarily use each sticker or find a different way to use the sticker. So I knew my basic plan for this card was like, I was going to have the strip and then this element where I put the sticker was going to be pretty substantial. So I thought, well, it's going to be okay um, if even if I just do that. But I can also, you know, once I had that basic design, I looked over to my scrap pile and thought, okay, now what else can I use? You know, if I already have determined that this design would be fine without anything can i throw a few scraps in there and will it enhance it or not um as i mentioned the purple card stock i'm always kind of revisiting it because i was really trying to use it up it was just like really um random that left from like a you know like i got a big pack and for whatever reason i just wasn't using a lot of purple so i keep trying to come up with uses for it and then i was like uh, you know, I, I did, I think I used a good portion of it, but the blue, which I wasn't as much trying to use up actually, um, kind of kept coming up more often as, uh, the right color or the color that I wanted here. This is a sunny studio dye that creates a like little pattern on the edge of your fishtail banner. Again, totally not necessary. You could just simply cut that out, but because I was already using some dyes, I thought, why not use up some of these products that, um, like, I have in my collection? You know, it certainly mm, takes up a bit more time, but I've done some other time-saving things, and I also still tried to make sure that the dyes I was using weren't, like, such a game changer that you felt like, oh, I can't make the card that she's making because I don't have that die or I need to go buy that die to make a really similar card. Um, so here I have basically scraps left, but I'm going to attempt to make as many cards as I can still, even with those scraps. I had relatively big pieces of this purple paper left still, but as you can see, those triangles are not quite the, uh, the sorry, the, the purple rectangles that I'm using on the left side, they're not quite the same size as each other, but I think they're similar enough 
that it could still create a same like basic design and then I had enough of the other side of the paper that I could create strips across so as I'm using it on one card I'm kind of trying to place a similar scrap in the pile next to me so that I can create another card here I'm going to add a bit more twine again. I did not actually use much of the blue twine even though I thought it went really well with the collection and I actually, like I said before, I, I often was picking the blue cardstock. I think it's because this particular blue twine was um, slightly different than the blue that was in all of the papers and cardstocks and that blue or blue was actually a really prominent color in the collection, whereas pink was an accent. So if you are going to try to do something similar, like use up some, see, and I did actually use pink on one and blue on the other to show you that like, even if I like the pink better, the blue still look good. Um, consider choosing a more accent color from the collection rather than a really prominent color because then if the match isn't perfect, it's not going to be as noticeable or bother the eye as much. I don't think that your recipient will notice that the blues are like quite a bit different. I just think that maybe if you're like me, you'll be thinking that the whole time and letting it distract you. So if you, if you do find yourself in that kind of situation, using that accent color might be a good way to change it up. So now that I have like just scraps, like really just scraps, um, I am not trying to follow any sketch anymore. I'm like really going like, Ugh, what? I'm just playing with things. And I thought that it was helpful to still show you this part of the process, even though I can't give you like really clear instructions on what I'm doing to encourage you that you could try the same thing where like you're really just putting this paper on this paper and you know changing it around and laying it all over the card base and what can it do and eventually I came up with a design that I actually really liked like I had these two pointy pieces and they were um you know they were pretty substantial I had this pretty substantial pink and purple piece left so there were definitely things to still work with and you know I wouldn't have probably ever come up with this design or tried this out except for it was literally all I had left and um, you know I might not ever try to recreate it either but actually I do really like the two like two papers pointing in so I think that that is an idea that I would I would take again you know maybe I would actually just put one more solid piece in the center or something but um, I think what's really can be quite fun about challenging yourself to go in and just use scraps is that you're going to come up with something that you never would have seen if you weren't just really trying to work with anything and everything that was left and it's the same thing with the stickers like would I have comboed all these stickers do I like there's a part of me going like Ooh, this is like a sticker card it's like um I used to Sandy Alnock used to call it sticker sneeze I don't know if she came up with that but like where people just put like stickers all over the card and I'm like is the sticker sneeze am I designing it like you know because I, I am trying to think about where things go like oh the little birdie should be like perched on something just like the owl is so I I, I hope it's not sticker sneeze I think <laughs> I like it I think it turned out cute um but yeah it, it it certainly um when you're working with scraps it can be really intimidating and you can really be like questioning yourself like oh is this does this make sense is this okay but as many of you know I do donate a lot of my cards and they a lot of them go to children and children are just not as critical of art and craft the way we are so as much as I do definitely try to make sure every card is quality I do remind myself sometimes like hmm I I know little kids like I used to work with little kids and they're going to go, they're going to see this card and go, oh, I love pink and that polar bear is so cute. And they're not going to be like, well, there's no rule of three. Um, speaking of donating cards, if you would like to try to donate some cards, then um, you can go to my website where, of course, I mentioned that there's going to be a coordinating blog post, but there's also 
a um, card drive resources page where I have jokes that you can put on the inside of cards as well as lists of organizations that you can donate to. This last one, I had just this like somewhat substantial size of this snowflakey paper that also, or I think it's a Yeti paper on the other side. It's like a really soft pattern of Yetis. Um, and I had a Yeti sticker left, so it really worked out well. And um, this is an, an example of like how you can use some really small scraps, but a piece of solid cardstock can kind of help you stretch out those really small scraps. So if you have any of those um, tiny scraps either in an existing pattern paper pad that you have, or that's really all you have left, try out some cards like that where you leave a lot of white space around them and take in some colored paper. So I wanted to show you like how much I had already used at this point. Like those sticker sheets are looking real bare. There's very few paper scraps left there at all. And I made this way too fast. I'm flipping through these cards like crazy because I had to speed everything up. But all of those stickers, all of those sheets of pattern paper, what I did was I took them and I decorated the inside of the cards. So, um, there's just like little strips of pattern paper at the bottom or a little sticker in the corner and the joke and my, uh, I, I signed, of course, of course, signed all of the cards. So that's what you do when you have just literally strips and tiny stickers left. Open up the cards and start filling them with little bits of cute to go with um, your, your sentiment and your other words inside. So that is it for my card tutorial today. I hope that you enjoyed this and you got some fun tips from my voiceover. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time. I hope that you check out the blog and get some great card ideas. And I will leave you links to everything that I mentioned. There'll be affiliate links. So thank you for supporting my channel in that way. And have an awesome day. Bye.